Hi everyone. I wanted to make this video um, because I know that so many of you have been worried about me, but also uh, because I thought it was very important that Bria share what her part of the story and, and her experience was like. Um, and I wanted to have a chance as well to share from my perspective what my experience was like. Um, this is about my relapse that happened last Saturday. It's been almost two weeks now and so in this video I am going to talk to you about what I was going through um, and then also I'm going to react to the video that Bria made because I have not seen it yet. I have not seen the footage of me um, while it was happening that's in that video and I haven't seen what Bria said so I want to um, share my perspective. In 2013 I ended up in the ER from overdosing on alcohol. I had been telling Bria for several months that I was quitting drinking, that I was not going to drink anymore and I had begun hiding alcohol around the house. I would even been pouring water into vodka bottles, putting it in the freezer until it froze. Of course, you know, Bria was just thinking I was telling the truth that I had quit drinking. But during that experience, I remember just being very in over my head with my PTSD and desperately wanting to get out of my head. And so I drank a bunch of vodka and I woke up in the ER. I had had a low heart rate, you know, I had risked my life and I was just sort of shocked into sobriety and Bria said at the time, you know, if you drink again, I can't stay with you. And so, of course, I quit drinking. I didn't want to lose the love of my life. But at the time, I really didn't quit drinking, I don't think, because I wanted to quit drinking or because I thought that sobriety was what was best for me. I mean, I thought that sobriety was best for me, but I don't think in my heart it wasn't coming from a place of self-love. It was coming from a place of fear of losing my partner. Fast forward, I guess I was fully sober for about three years. About a year and a half ago, I thought that I was going to lose Bria when we were going through a really hard time and I drank half a beer. For me, like I recognized that that could be considered a relapse, but um, I didn't consider it that. It was more of a big slip up, which up until this point, I've never tried AA. I tried Smart Recovery in Atlanta but then ignorantly thought, oh, I've got control over this and didn't go to any meetings when we moved to LA. Obviously now I know that was a mistake, but that was just what I was doing. And then three times in the last year, besides last Saturday, I mean, and I was in really low places in these moments. Things with Bria and I have really calmed down a lot. We got engaged, we got married. Things have been looking up, you know? Things have been getting better and better. But at the same time, I've been going through a period of the past few months of getting increasingly isolated, increasingly lonely, cutting myself off from people, and really getting in my mind. And then two months ago, I realized, you know, I wanna quit smoking weed. I've been smoking weed for nine years to try to deal with my trauma. I'm gonna go fully sober for the first time, you know, since I've had PTSD since I was 19. Last Saturday was the two month mark of me being fully sober. And ironically, I was celebrating by having a sober party and a live stream and a you now, many of you were there, celebrating two months sober from weed. And at the end of that broadcast, I something just snapped. And now I'm learning more about how sometimes that can happen. Sometimes relapses can be triggered by sober celebrations, like there's all kinds of things. I went to the store, I got a box of waffles, a coffee, and then as I was checking out, a handle of vodka. So I hadn't had a binge drinking experience since 2013. And I know so many of you are probably wondering like, why? Why would you, why would you do this? And I've been trying to answer that myself. I know Bria wants that answer and now that I've had some time to process it, it's making a, a lot more sense to me, even though it doesn't fully make sense. This was a very impulsive decision, which oftentimes when people do relapse, it is a very impulsive decision or it's celebrating a milestone. But I came home, I made the waffles, the live stream was still on. I ate 10 waffles very quickly, which probably saved my life. And I went to the bathroom towards the end of the live stream and I just chugged some of the vodka. I probably had five or six shots. I came back in, sat down, and they some of you have said you could see that I was acting different, but I wasn't really quite cognizant as many alcoholics, you know, you're like, I've got this under control. What a celebration, two months sober. Bria was out getting me a gift. 
for our four month you know wedding anniversary i proceeded to drink and i drank 13 shots if some of you are thinking like as the doctors thought once i got to the hospital because i ended up in the hospital again as you saw that this must be a suicide attempt you must be trying to end your life and i want to be clear that throughout all this trauma i have never consciously tried to end my life or even wanted to end my life but i will be very honest about bria got back and found me very highly intoxicated. I had had the alcohol so soon before Bria got back that at first she couldn't even tell I was drunk. I couldn't even tell I was drunk. And then it hit me like a freight train. I remember feeling highly intoxicated. It was I was doing everything I could to act as sober as possible once she got back. And then my memory starts getting very fuzzy as soon as I went to try to get rid of the bottle. But before Bria returned, I remember thinking to myself like, oh my gosh, Chrissy, this is kind of scary. Like you could be, you could be drinking enough to really hurt yourself. Like you're not very big, you're very small. Kind of voice in the back of my mind, which I've been learning a lot of alcoholics have this voice, this self-hatred, self-sabotaging voice. You've had PTSD for all this time. You know, at least you won't be a burden anymore if something bad happens to you. And I remember not agreeing with that, but just like also not having a lot of empathy and compassion to myself. Like, why did I drink? Why did I drink? My dad, you know, my dad had a heart attack a couple of weeks ago and I handled that soaps fully sober and that was very scary. For me, I think the biggest red flag is that I've not been sober in nine years to deal with trauma. And now I've spent the past two months trying to handle everything sober and been highly overwhelmed. In the live stream, somebody had said a comment, uh, just like a inappropriate comment. For whatever reason, uh, I decided to Google myself. I just saw, you know, I saw the links and that's always kind of downward spiral, but I think that was just one more added element. And then there was also a part of me that was, you know, Brie and I have been going through such a struggle for the past year and things are getting better, but would we ever find peace? Like, would we ever get to that peaceful place with each other that we really so desire and we've been working so hard for? I think it was a combination of a lot of things. You know, Brie didn't do anything to, to cause this. It was my choice to drink. And it was also my choice to like carry this stress and internalize all the stress, feeling lonely, not reaching out to people because I don't have a habit of that. For those of you who are watching this, who have reached out to me because you saw Bria's video. Thank you so much. It really means so much to me. Communication for me and, and letting people in is incredibly difficult. I think the biggest thing though was trying to handle all of these different stressors while sober and constantly, every day, multiple times a day, thinking about wanting to drink, thinking about wanting to get high, wanting to get out of my head, thinking about the videos and just getting really overwhelmed, thinking about Bria and I, thinking about the move and i snapped i impulsively decided to drink and because i'm an alcoholic i cannot i'm incapable of moderating my drinking almost drank myself to death for the second time when bria got here she freaked out when she realized i've been drinking rightfully so i thought for two days i'm gonna lose my wife i woke up in the er again i had almost died again the thing that's different about this time is that I've really realized that like I've got some very deep-seated, you know, self-hatred, like a, a huge lack of self-love. And a huge part of what we do with our channel is try to encourage people to love themselves, accept yourselves for who you are. And I have not been practicing that towards myself. You know, I truly want all of that for everyone else. I care so much about Bria. I love her so dearly, I love people close to me, but I don't think that I've been really loving myself. If anything, I maybe have been punishing myself. There's obviously a lot of guilt about the trauma from years ago. There's guilt and self-hatred about the videos. So much shame and just a, a massive lack of, of self-compassion, self-love and empathy. And that's something that I didn't know before and I can really recognize now. If I'm not actively trying to take my life, I must have a huge lack of self-regard to like put myself in that much danger. To drink a fatal dose of alcohol. <sighs> I know that there's footage of me being hysterical, I believe. I don't remember any of that. I remember turning around in the laundry room and getting caught with the bottle by Bria. And then I remember waking up in the hospital. I spent two days thinking that my wife was gonna divorce me because she needed to hold true to her promise or ultimatum that if I drank again, she was gonna leave. 
So I confessed that I drank those other times and I had to respect if she wanted to leave. The day after I got out of the hospital, I went to my first AA meeting, which I had avoided for years because I didn't like the religious aspect. I can already say I'll be an AA for the rest of my life. The things that I'm learning there about my addiction, that no one's forcing God on me, the sense of community and, and other people who understand what I've been through, who've made those choices, who felt that low who desperately want to feel like somebody else gets what they're going through. I'm experiencing that. I think it's already been life-changing. The self-love that I'm starting to experience, even just the, the way that I'm caring for myself and not beating myself up, like I have just always really, really been so harsh on myself. And I'm trying more now to treat myself like, like I would want somebody who loved me to treat me. This time I'm doing it because I love me. I want to get better and, and truthfully, I don't want to die. I don't want three strikes and I'm out. Like I'm very committed to doing literally everything I can to, to stay sober and to never drink again. And I'm so grateful for all of you who've been saying kind things. My family's been very supportive. Bria's been going to Al-Anon and she's realized, you know, the ultimatum thing is, is not the right way. And, I'm so grateful that she's chosen to, to stay, stay by me and support me in sickness and in health. I would do the same for her. I can't imagine loving an addict, but I'm incredibly grateful for her love. When I think about, can I go 24 hours without getting high or without getting drunk? Of course, of course. Sometimes it may be challenging if I'm stressed, but I can definitely do 24 hours. And that's how I've been thinking and I'm just starting over each day. I'm like, it's just another 24 hours. And honestly, that has really shifted my thinking. I don't feel so overwhelmed. Having any near-death experience is very sobering and I wanna live in every moment and appreciate every single moment in a way that I've not done before. And I don't wanna miss out on my life. Like, I wanna stay sober now because I wanna be present. I'm gonna watch this video now and see what it was like for Bria. Thank you all. Thank you all for sticking by me. Thank you all for believing in me and for people like me. Bria had to take care of herself and clearly I have to take care of myself too. So if we take care of ourselves, we'll be able to take care of each other. So just thank you all. I love you all. Chrissy overdosed this week on alcohol. And if that wasn't hard enough, five years ago, I told her if she ever drank alcohol again, I would leave her. Five years ago, Chrissy ended up in the hospital. Chrissy overdosed on alcohol five years ago and almost died. It is December 14th, 2013. We are here in the hospital. She was three times the, the lethal amount of alcohol in her bloodstream, and the doctors told me that she almost died. Um, that was a brick wall she needed to hit, and she said she would never drink again. I was terrified. I told her if she ever drank again, I would leave her. I could not be with an alcoholic. In 2013, I had taken a clip of Chrissy when she was passed out, and she looked at that video the next day and said, I will never drink again. This last weekend, I said, okay, I'm gonna film this. I'm gonna show Chrissy at her worst to herself, and maybe this will save her life. You wanna die? Is this a suicide attempt? Like, do you want a divorce? Like, <laughs> was this an attempt on her life? <laughs> How do you drink a whole thing of I wanted to know why she wanted to hurt herself, why she wanted to do this. That was the longest hospital drive. We ended up going to one hospital that wasn't an emergency hospital, and they said there was nothing they could do, and then we went to another hospital, and during the car ride, Chrissy was having a hard time breathing, and she was pretty much pretty unconscious. Two days later, I, um, I told Chrissy to come, come home. I wanted to see her. And uh, we talked and we cried and we hugged and I told her that I married her four months ago 
and I've been with her for seven years and that the vows, the vows said in sickness and in health and you're sick and I'm gonna be there for you and I love you. I started going to meetings called Al-Anon meetings. They're for people whose who's like friends, family, spouses are alcoholics. And it, it's really something for you to feel good about yourself. It's not really to like, it's not to take care of somebody else to take care of you. And what I did learn is that you don't give ultimatums unless you're gonna stand by them. And that's really, that's something that's hard for you. Like my ego is like, my ego, you know, you said you were gonna do something. And if you don't do something, how is anybody gonna have any respect for you? I told her if she drank again, I would leave her. And what does that say about me? But I love her and I'm gonna fight with her, fight for her, and mostly I'm gonna fight for myself. I love her, she is an extremely strong person and I will continue to support her and love her no matter what, because I married her and I'm madly in love with her and I want her to be happy and I hope that she can love herself as much as I love her. Wow. She's so incredible. I just... You know, my first thoughts watching that is one, it's like gut wrenching to see see yourself that way and to know the pain that, that Bria, that my loved ones, people there were probably going through just to witness that. And to see the pain that I was clearly going through, some kind of anguish. Um I think seeing that, you know, is a huge deterrent of wanting to drink. I'm, I'm so grateful for the love that I received from Bria. Her love is so unconditional, and the love I have for her is so unconditional. And I'm proud of her for putting herself first, you know? It was hard when I was awake, and she was like, I've got to put me first, and she left me there in the hospital room like it hurt. But I couldn't be mad at her, really, because she's really never put herself first. So for her to do that, you know, I knew she had to take care of herself. And I think that will make our relationship healthier to each put ourselves first so that we can be better partners to each other. It's really hard to see, to see me like that, but I am glad to see it because I guess like in 2013, you know, I don't want to see myself suffer that way. That's just so intense. I feel so, so sorry, you know, I could go to feeling guilt for this, but I really want to try to learn from it and to grow from it. And hopefully for those of you who've watched it, you know, maybe it is, I've heard it's helped some of you choose not to pick up the bottle. You wanted to drink and you, you abstained, you know, and I hope other partners, obviously if you have to go, you have to take care of yourself and you can't take it anymore. I understand. I'm so glad that Bree is not in that place because I am committed in a whole new way to try to get sober for me, not just to save a relationship, but because I want to save myself. Love you all. Thank you all for watching this and thank you all for standing by us.